So I'm going to select all and I'm going to create from elements terrain model. Feature type should still be break line. And this surface is going to be called EXO. EW, sorry. Not EX. It's AMG3 service EW. All right, so this is a, this is the bottom surface, and you kind of got to do the same thing. You know, clean this one up, set the boundaries. Same thing we did on the other one, but this one is going to be a little trickier because we don't have the cut and fill in here. Probably should actually have those lines as well. We need to stop and think about it because that should be part of. It. Here, here's what I'm going to suggest: if if you need to. You know, if you need to do a bottom surface, if you're doing a project that does have three deliverables in the scope, in the, you know, that's the 3D PR code in Project Suite, if it has that, then I would suggest you make sure you're on the latest version. Um, talk to your CAD manager or whatever so you can get on the latest version of the software because this is a very much in development. So we're going to be making changes and updates to how the procedure is going to be, how the workflow is going to happen. So, you know, by the time you get around to it, we might have a little better way of doing it. And you can do the same thing. You still export this to an XML. And now you have one that still needs work. But now you see how you export it, at least. And that one's going to be uh, AMG3 service EW01.xml. dot XML. And this is our, we're going to call it our bottom surface. Or you can call it proposed bottom surface if you want. What do we want to cover now? What do you guys, curb ramps you can do? You know. So let's go, let's go to the design file. So it's not as easy as like, uh, how we, did the uh, we started to build those and um, it was early on and we never really completed them but we did complete the, the the 2d versions of them but not the 3d version so let's remove these civil cells let's see which ones these are cr1 c it's already in there on that one, huh? Yeah, these are already in there, but I can remove these. So if you go to, or I'll go to the um, project explorer. The civil cells, turn on constructions. So the 2D civil cells obviously are over in the civil cells um, library, place civil cell. If you go to the place civil cell, there's a library of them that comes up. And we have in here under not transitions, ramp terminals, not those, uh, sidewalk curb ramps. Here they are. And they're based on the standards, so the different types. Uh, and if you look at them, you can kind of get an idea of the reference lines that you'll need to place them with. So this is a typical C curve, uh, curve ramp, whereas that differs from, uh, let's see, the other one out there is like a, an A. That's where a sidewalk comes right into a radius. A C is where, or an E. An E is where it's right up against 
This would be like a mid block curb ramp. But a C is one that you typically would have in the middle of a radius, right? So the way it works is it needs to have a back of curb line and some linear, some location in here. So you're going to do some kind of, um, you're going to do some kind of uh, pedestrian uh, transportation corridor through here with your ADA analysis and try to figure out what's the best way to get across here, right? Do you want to put them on the refuge island? Do you want to have them cross back here? Whatever you decide, you'll end up with a, a line that you want to start with to, to build this ramp off of, and then you can tweak it from there. So, for example, I'll put in a nice, bright, white dash line, and it can be anywhere. So there it is. So there's the old one. I just created a new one. So when you go to place these, it just needs that reference. So I'm going to pick it under ramp terminals, wrong one, under sidewalk ramps, type C, choose OK. It'll ask for the back of curb. So there's two lines here. There's a, there's a sidewalk line, and then there's a curb line if you reset. Sidewalk. Your right click doesn't do a reset. Should. Did you hit tab to switch between them? Let's try it again. There it is, curve back. And then whatever your location line is, in this case, it has to go across the back of the sidewalk and the front of the sidewalk for this to work. Or at least, I'm sorry, the back of the curb and the back of sidewalk. And it places it in there based on the geometry and the design and the uh, standards. And then if you, if you need to flip it, you can. Or if you're good with it that way, you can just accept it. Something weird with the angle there. And it, yeah, that's just because of the way it is on the radius. It's not really at the radius point. So this line, you can adjust it if you need to. If you need to tweak this a little bit, you can pick up this and bend it. And the whole ramp will adjust itself. If you want to move the whole thing, you can find the middle grip or manipulator. And uh, you typically would lay this out radial, right, to the uh, radius. But you can slide them, move them around, get them right where you want them. So it stays perpendicular to the You're Like radius. if I move this point to a center point of this radius right there, now it's going to be radial, right? Then you can just pick up this guy and move it and it will stay radial. If you want to line it up better with this crosswalk, you can move it over there. Okay. Once you have it in 2D, then in order to get it in, in 3D, there's a couple of things that we can do. Well, for this particular one, there, the, civil, the, uh, the linear template actually has points that we've added to it that will allow you to put in a parametric constraint to drop the front of the curb and it drops the back and holds the back up. So when we were editing this particular template, do you, you remember seeing these extra points over here? Okay, so this was the original template right here that we had before we put we, we made modifications so that it could be used as a curb ramp. And what we actually did is if you don't you don't understand templates yet, but 
if you are, if these are all constrained together. So if I if I were to lower this curb, and I can test it by choosing this uh, vertical control, you'll see what happens when I lower the curb, right? It doesn't really um, respond or or rebuild itself according to the way you would actually build it in the field, right? So you have to modify some of these constraints. And that's what this version does. So now if I come over here and I modify this so it stays it stays at this slope, I also modify this so that it stays at a 2% above this point of the curb, or actually above, at a fixed distance above here. But if I adjust this curb height, it now drops I need to fix that bottom point, but it does drop this down to a drop curb like that, and see it holds the back, it creates a back of curb on the back side there. See that? So in order to fix this, instead of this being vertically, what I would do is is you haven't learned this yet. I would I would make this either a slope from this point, and then I've changed it. So if I move this up and down, it holds, it keeps the bottom flat. Okay, now this point here is vertically above this outside edge, or the flow line in this case, and it has a label called curb height. Okay, so remember that. So I'm going to save this, and since this is the template that was on this corner. I'm going to resynchronize it. And I don't know if it processed or not, but is this locked by any chance? No. So let's see what template this is. If not, I'll just change it. Okay, so that's using a different one. This is this is the one we want to use right here. Oh, actually, I edited the wrong one. Oh, yeah. okay, so that's what it was. Let's go look at that other template. This has the points. So, so this one stays flat. So I had already fixed it on this one. So it's this one that has one. Okay, so... <clears throat> So what you're going to do on this corridor is you're going to add a parametric constraint for the curb height from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. So now I'm going to open up that second view again so you can watch this happen. Parametric constraints are already in there, right? Um, From the existing curb ramp. Probably just need to change the location. I think I need to process this corner because I deleted that thing. You didn't delete the parametric constraints, right? No. So it's it's set for the old ones, you're right. So you just need to change the location or you can delete those and create new ones. Yes, yeah, so let me just delete these of the old ones. So now you see it's just a straight straight curve through there, right? See that well enough? All right. So then what I would do is I would come in here and add a curve. I would add a um, parametric constraint, and I would just pick these points right here from here. to picked it the wrong way, of course. Start over here because it's a lower station. Say I'm going to transition from here to there. And the label I'm going to transition with is curb height. And it's going to go from 0.5 to 0. And now it dropped it. 
See that? Now I got to add another one. And I have to go from, from here to there. And I'm going to use curve height. But this time I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to end at zero. And now it flattens it across there. And see the back, the, the back is holding the curve height. And then obviously I would just add the last one. From, I'm trying to get it to snap to there. Come on. Give me a snap. All right, I'll just get close. Start at zero and end at 0.5. And that's how you place that type of a curb ramp in there. Well, the V awesome was the medium change, right? So it's really no different because if you look at the template, I have a label on this point, and the label is curb height. So I'm for a range, I'm going from 0.5 to 0, from 0 to 0, and then from 0 to 0 0.5. I'm just changing it using this label. On our other template, we're setting this point right here, which is, which is collapsed on itself. This V offset right here we're setting that to zero always, which what that really does is it takes all of this up here and it puts it down in here, but it only turns on when it sees a curve in the median. So that that's parametric constraint does the same thing. It just overrides the value of it in the template. So that's how you can do that curve ramp. Now, if it's a, Let's say that it's a different type of curb ramp. Let's find a different one over here. Like, let's say there's a, uh, we haven't worked out all the details. Let's say there's a line right here. And we're going to put a uh, civil cell. I have to figure out which one it is here. Does anybody know off the top of their head? I think it's either Type a, a. So this would be the case where the sidewalk terminates at the end of a radius, which might be D. Yeah, this yeah. is it right here. So in this case, yeah, this white line wouldn't be good. We could probably put it right here, except that I've got this whole transitioning thing happening already. Um, now let me rotate this around and think. No, it would actually be the left R, left D, this one. <clears throat> if you rotate this 180, it would be in this orientation, so I think this is it. So if we choose OK, it's going to ask you for the end of the sidewalk back, which is this one, and then the curb back, which is this one, I think it's going to break. And then the sidewalk back is this one. So so here it is trying to actually fit that in there. That assume because of our curve. Trend, pardon? It assumes continuous curve. So the better thing to, to do would be to put it a few feet down from the end. Yeah, let me try that. So let's say this is the end, and this is the back, and this is the front, or the back sidewalk. There you go. 
Well, not quite. I think that one, let's try a different one for that one. Let's try the one that is a, uh, it's G. Yeah, that's where you actually have, well, this is where the, see, this really isn't configured for either one of those. A better one might be over here. Uh, the other side in, is that where you did it when you were in District 4, right there? Right over here? Yeah. Possibly. So let's try this one here. Let's say this is a... Uh, I'm just not sure what this line here is for, though. It might be just an offset line. Oh, for the no, word. That's the ramp. Yeah, that's your ramp. Yeah. Go down. So we're going to put this line. That line. And that line. And it is still going to try to curve this out in this case. So reset and accept. You can modify that civil cell, I guess, drop yeah, it. If you if want you it to, to be a straight there, you can. Condition. So now in this case, you've got to transition the curb down here. And, well, this would work probably with the same. This would work with the same. Um, the same linear template that we already have. Because if you look at this one, uh, well, this isn't the right one. Let's swap this one out to, um, let's go and change this the other way. Let's go to properties here and use this one here. The only thing it's not going to have is this curb on this side. So let's go look at this intersection real quick while we're building this. So what we're trying to do is drop this. This here. Okay. So in this case, we would use, did I change that template yet? Let me check and see. I don't think I accepted it. No, I must have. Okay, good. So now I would just go to this corridor and add an object. Parametric constraint. And go from here to here, roughly. And there should be a curb height in here. There isn't. Still, I don't think I've ever switched out that other template. Let's try that again. Did you synchronize that one with the library? Let's try that. Yes, so it last changed in the design. Uh, so we're going to change it to this one. Okay, so now I see I have those extra points in there. So now I can add that um, parametric constraint to this corridor. Curve height starts at five, ends at zero. That'll drop it down. Isn't there like a quarter inch lip at curve ramp? Yeah, probably. We can change that. So probably should be do a point two five. But that's no, it's in feet. So what does that Oops. come out to in feet? Quarter inch. Yeah. Point oh two. Point oh two. Oh two oh eight. Did you say you could like do the calculation over there? Like, 
And so now I've got that transitioning down. But what I don't have is that curve on the other side. You just so, transition back up for six inches. But then the sidewalk would go up as well. But you, you, oh, that's, I see that's the saying. curb. The sidewalk is the curb, right? Yep. Um, you would have to. Just gonna add one more point. Let's try it. Let's go from here to here. The end of the radius is right here. So let me change the start station. Oh, that—that that is the. Those are right. It's this one here that's wrong. This should be 0.367, whatever. I went too far with it, I think. Uh, so that goes 79,367 is 79,861. This number won't change for me. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to work to rotate no. it up back up there like that. So that's one technique. Theoretically, I thought it would have, but I don't know why. I mean, there's a, the other technique is to actually go in and model, is put a slope on each of these elements or build these slopes individually. And that's really tedious. So. Um, I, I find the easiest way is to try to just modify this curve and sidewalk. I'm sorry, this uh, yeah, curve and sidewalk elements so that you can transition like this. Um, if it's a mid block, you can do the same thing, only just not put that lip on the back. You just drop the you just drop the the whole sidewalk down, right, and it ramps to it. So you use the same. Template. Yeah, you could come over to this. Uh, or the that have that. And if you have like a type A, you just widen the sidewalk out, right, to go back. Yeah, like in this you case, landing behind if you it. went to this one, whoops, this one here, yeah. In this one here, you would just easily put a curb height on this point, which you have. And then just when you rotate this down, it would, uh, well, now in this case, you, what you'd want to do is make sure that this one is uh, not sloped from the top, but you could keep this at a vertical distance from this point. All right. That holds it at that elevation and re relative to that elevation. And then if you were to adjust this, It rotates, it holds that down. Of course, you have to adjust that point, make sure that that's fixed, a fixed distance instead of a slope. So right now it's sloped. You could change this to a vertical from here. Or if you use the other one, you could use that and set it as a landing with a different yeah. constraint on width, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. it all depends on how you want to how you want them to um, build it, right? So in that case, it ramps down. But if it, it's supposed to, it may, it's supposed to stay flat for I think four feet. That way, yeah. you got to actually put in a longer runway than that. Like in this case, if you had a mid block, I believe you're supposed to put in a. We actually have one out there, so we could draw that and then place the civil cell for a mid block, which is uh, remember which one that is B. I think it's A, but A. Yeah, there it is. Uh, yeah, that looks. So there's one. There's that one, and there's. Is it? Yeah, but this one. Styles. This is the one I'm thinking of. That's if you have a utility strip. No, there's. This is the landing. This is the. So yeah. So you got to build the pad. So yeah, that would be it. So it wants to know where's the curve back again. 
space back and where the construction line is. And then it went to the wrong side. So you just keep flipping these until it fits it in there. And then reset and accept. So in this case, what you'd have to do, it, it places it in there, but you would have to modify your sidewalk to, uh, you know, to apply, to allow for that landing in the back. And if, if you wanted a bigger landing, you can change this dimension here to minus some other distance, six or whatever. It also works off of... Uh, these reference lines, so this was the, if you wanted this to be wider than five feet, you could change it to minus seven. And it widens it out. So that's kind of how those are built. Then to model this, um, you couldn't just go into a curve and sidewalk thing because this is all concrete in this case. You have to change it. It's more like a driveway, actually. So speaking of driveways, if you need to put in a driveway, uh, like a, let's turn on the uh, aerial again. And update this view. You got to reload this to have it show up. Um, why isn't that showing up in that view? Are you open file? Hmm? Are you open file? Uh, I'm just going to refresh it. Probably all the levels are turned off. What level is coming out? Okay, so there it is. So let's say there was going to be a driveway, uh, an urban driveway up here. So you would place a line where you wanted to start it. Let's say you're going to start it right here. And that's all it needs. It really just needs to know the first location because everything's going to be built off of this. So then hopefully this will work. You go to, uh, now I just jinxed myself. Civil cells, place civil cell. We have 2D driveways and 3D driveways. In this case, we're going to try a 3D urban driveway. And it needs to know where your edge of pavement is, where your back of sidewalk is, and where your edge line is. The, the key here is that the these all ha these two have to have profiles, but this one doesn't in order to be able to build that in there with 3D geometry, right? So what I usually do, this line has already got a profile. What we don't have is a profile on the back sidewalk line. So we can go to the Project Explorer and go to the back, the sidewalk lines and turn on the under the PMs. Go to the properties. And set this create geometry for linear defaults to true, just like we did for the edge of pavement lines. They're not going to draw automatically because we've got uh, we've got to synchronize the template. Or we got to process the corridor first. It might take a second to process that. We should be able to place it now, right? Or do we need to set those as active profiles? That's what I was trying to figure out. So I look back here. That's for the pavement. It's here. Driveway line. It's there. It's close to being right. It's not taking back sidewalk. Oh, that's because there's not enough, uh, there isn't a utility strip between. Oh, you the sidewalk. Yep. So we can fix that. 
I think it'll probably heal itself too if we do that. So let's say that uh, we go to this t corridor template and change it. Um, whoops, not that one. Or templates, stay with 61. Dang. Well, this is already out there. So which line? Oh, because it's using the... We used a different way to overwrite it, I think. Yeah, so let's go to the actual element. In... So that would be this. If we turn off the constructions... So you have it following the feature line, so we'll move the feature line and it should adjust itself. The template sitting there with the utility strip. In the graphics, there's no utility strip, so the template found the graphics and adjusted it in. So the civil cell never got placed. So you could adjust two things. Let's first take this, uh, turn off the constructions manually, and then take this back, this sidewalk front line, find the grip for it, which is right here, which is really tiny. Because I have to reset it to the workspace doctor. I'm just going to set it over here, give it a little utility. So that is now set to 1.25, which is probably better to go to 3 for now. Works better with 3. Well, the, the proper way to do it is to save it as soon as you change your workspace file. The save your user preferences. Make a copy of your settings. Put it in a different folder as soon as you've changed it. Copy it back. And then every time you have to run workspace doctor, you copy it back over. But even if it crash, I've noticed that sometimes it doesn't save check it because sometimes that gets corrupted too. Corrupted That's why you need to do so it right after you've saved it. So here's the other thing. Right notice, you've changed. notice that the front of sidewalk line matches, but the back of sidewalk line doesn't, right? Why is that? Because that's why these lines are good for QC. Because the template library has a five-foot <coughs> five sidewalk. It never got changed to six-foot. So if we want it to be... Or actually, what we, we should change it in here is where we should change it because it should be five feet when there's a utility strip and six feet when it's at the back of the sidewalk. So that's why it's off. So now it'll match. So now I'll move that there. Let's go back to where we're going to place this driveway. Over here. So this has a profile and so does this now. So now we should be home free. And if we turn on view two, not view three, turn that one off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open the profile for this line so we can see where it's located. Just use the existing ground as the active profile. So as soon as I set this active, what will happen? You guys know this. It'll create a 3D line out here somewhere. Turn yeah. off in that view. Yeah, yeah you don't have construction view. lines turned on there. Yeah. There it is. Down below. Down below. Okay, so Bam. you can see this happen. All right, so it's going to be right there. If all works. We say you need a profile for that line for the civil cell, right? Yep. You only need the back of the You only need this one and this one, right. and it will use this elevation. It will use this elevation, transition between the two, and then drape to wherever it can hit the ground, if it can hit the ground. And it's not going to go off of this slope. It's going to go to the existing surface. So the edge of payment need an active profile then? Yeah, which it does by the purple line. That line has a profile. Oh, okay. So you got to select the right one. Okay. Yeah, you got to make sure you pick the right one. Place civil cell. Which one? 3D urban driveway. So the first thing it wants is the sidewalk back with a profile, which is that one. And then it wants the pavement one. It's only going to pick ones with, well, 
Well, I thought it would, but no, that's not true. You don't want to be able to draw it, right? If you take a lot of that. Yeah. That one. Then that one. That well, would be out of whack. There you go. The one would be a total of like three D. Be somewhere yeah, in space. Somewhere in space. <clears throat> So now, the easiest way to see this is to turn off slopes. I don't want to turn off slopes. It's in there, actually. So you need to get rid of the curve for that oh, section, too. Right? Yes. It's underneath everything. It is. Why is it picking that one? So we place it, it doesn't show up. Spicy, yeah, I see it's it. It's underneath everything. Yeah, oh, I don't think I can mean, replace everything else that's there now. Oh. Because it slopes, so you do it that. starts sloping yeah. right after the edge oh, of the sidewalk. Right. You're going to have to take that one So it slopes. That's why you can't see it. Yep, so this is. Uh, Curb and gutter type F, CNGPX. This is. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it got the right profile the there. there. It's just this back of sidewalk line, which is. Uh, it didn't pick that profile up right or something. So, yeah. It's, it thinks that this is the back of sidewalk profile. So let's try to get it from the surface over here. The top yeah, it came up a little bit. It's That's still not on the right yeah, surface, yeah. though. So I'm going to pick this as a reference surface and see if it will plug that. There it is. So there's the real profile that we want. That is, so if we set this as the active profile, that driveway should lift itself up. There it goes. So that's more like what it should come in there. It's, it's just a matter of getting those profiles right, obviously. So what I did is I just picked the actual line on the, on the driveway that was placed, and I, and I got the profile from this slope back here. I tried to get it from the sidewalk, but it wouldn't give me a good sidewalk on it. So in this view, maybe I didn't do it right either. The sidewalk, turn that on. So I was trying to use this tool here, quick profile from surface, with this sidewalk reset. Okay, it gave me, it put it in there that time. So, so that's how you can fix it if you know what you're doing. If you can always go into the try to get a better profile established. So there was the profile for that for that driveway. But then you'd have to use this this civil cell boundary as a clipping reference, which you can do. There's a, there is a, I mean, but you'd have to make a shape. And actually there's a terrain out here that you can use for this one. And you can use the boundary of this one for the other. So let's try it. So if you go to quarter modeling, Clipping references, you can use this curb as one, and then you've got to come in here and find this terrain boundary there as the other one. And then if you reset, you can watch it try to clip it out of there. And you didn't select the SR61 corridor first. Oh, I didn't. You're right. I wonder why it went so fast. There you go. And you there could, is a driveway. If you want it colored nicely, you could add a surface template to that, I guess, six inch depth. Well, the other way is to go to this concrete PX level. 
So there's concrete PX. Notice there is no material defined for it. Can't see that because you don't see materials yet. There's materials. So there's a asphalt, there's gravel, there's concrete four. So if we go to this one, we can look for concrete pellet, pick concrete, and now it's concrete. Oh, but if you want the quantities to show up, does that have a depth? This already? Yeah, oh, yeah. So? Okay. This already has a surface template. As a matter of fact, it is okay. a surface That's template. Okay, that's all I Because I turned the terrain off first. Yeah, if we turn off the slopes PX, or the slopes. Well, it's shoulder on paved right here, right? See? Okay, great. It's actually even deeper. Yeah, it should be cycle. should be six versus four. Or something the other like that. thing is, it goes right here. It goes to the existing ground. So, and now that you have it in there, right? <laughs> theoretically, you could just change these. Uh, you know, if you had to modify something, you could move it down the road if you wanted to. It should rebuild itself. Well, I'm gonna try to move this a little bit. I'm gonna move it over here. Living dangerous. Mm -hmm. What? It should no because that the ruled profile is off of the surface of the sidewalk, right? Or it's the surface of the slope, so it should adjust itself. Let's show you some of our recorded webinars on things. We're gonna take a Can you get to our website from here? Yeah, CAD website. CAD website, there you go. That one. So under posted webinars, under quarter modeling, we have uh, quarter optimization techniques, which will talk about how to make your quarter run faster when you're working. Because you notice that I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. So there's ways to make it faster. So basically, this is what uh, causes your corridor to process. The template drops, the parametric constraints, the horizontal features, point controls. And uh, this is based on preliminary design and final. For a basic corridor, you can see as you add more and more quarter objects at each stage, it takes exponentially longer, especially if you add clipping references. So that's kind of a synopsis of what of what you can go in there and kind of work with unlocking. You've already learned about this. Um, can I stop corridor from processing? That's a big question. Can I just stop it when I'm, oh, oops, didn't mean to do that. Can you just say, oops, stop? No, you can't. You either have to wait for it to finish or you can restart your machine. Speaking of which, oh, there it is. See, it moved it down there. You yeah, built it and everything. It's magic. Once you have it set up right, it works beautiful. Uh, let's see what else is out there. We have two sessions on roundabouts. So we have the 2D version, how to lay it out with the civil geometry and how to model it. So those are out there for you to use. Uh, there's crossover details. What this talks about is these type of situations that I mentioned earlier and how do you model those. So uh, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to model this as though it's a crossover from here all the way to here. So it's all pavement and it has a crown down the middle at first. Okay. And then you're going to come in here and put in a drape a line on the surface, find its profile and use a linear template. Easy enough, right? Same thing there. Over here, same thing. Here, you're just going to run a traffic separator. We ran a traffic, whoops, we ran a traffic separator around the nose, but you can run that all along there if you want to. That's a half piece of a traffic separator. And eventually, then you'll have to come in here and see how do I want this to slope? So as you're coming in to turn here, do you want it to break over here? Do you want it to break over here? Um, so you got to do a little grading about how you would build this 
And then you just add those break lines in here and you say slope up to this one and slope down to this one. And you just add an additional line on your median components and it actually breaks it over. And essentially it just talks about adding these reference lines. You got to configure this crossover to have these additional lines so it'll slope up instead of just, and it basically becomes a flat crown. So you end up with something like this. So as this one rises, this is just a flat slope. And uh, that's typically what you do for crossovers. Uh, let's go back to here. Urban driveways, the one we just pretty much went through. Gen files, might as well delete that. We don't create those anymore. Ramp terminal details. So this one here talks about how you model this stuff out. You've got your main interstate, or whatever, uh, limited access facility, you're going to create a ramp. At some point, it becomes independent. And how do you control the profiles here? And how do you model this? Well, essentially what this is is a, um, I don't know if I have the template in there, but it's a template with some hidden components. So this template is a normal template back here. And then when you get to this point, it actually has this whole widening pavement for the ramp. And so it widens out based on as the ramp baseline, which is a point control, pushes out, then it pulls this out to a certain extent, and then it's fixed. And then it starts pulling out this other segment until it gets to the physical gore. And then from there, you're just, you can see the details of the shoulder haven't even been worked out. They're crossing over one another, but you can, you can add it in those details as well. So there's a step-by-step -step procedure for modeling out those. This is the one slide I was talking about earlier, the details of a corridor, intersections. We've already covered that. Traffic separators, median crossovers, the turning islands, we talked about that. Driveway and sidewalk ramps, we've talked about. Curb transitions, I've talked about that little diagram over there. We didn't really show it. Roundabouts, these are mitered end sections, slope transitions, crossovers, it's kind of a duplicate here. Retention ponds, ramp terminals, restricted turn lanes. So these are pretty much the ones that we've got recordings for. If you look over here, so this is probably the one that covers the 3D civil cells for the noses and stuff. So like I said, there's a, we, we pretty much got a recording for most of these advanced topics. We just don't have a class together for it yet. There's a pond design workflow. And at the end of this, you'll end up with a pond. Yeah, these are also, by the way, out on YouTube. If you go, do you guys know about our YouTube site? If you go to YouTube f.training, and want to search on anything like uh, pond design. So first, you got to search YouTube for FDOT training. You can I think go, I go F dot uh, civil cells. I think that's in that group too. Okay, so then there's a search here, not the YouTube search, but there's our search. If you come over here and key in pond design, whoops, not pond design. There's two D's there, by the way. Search, search, pond design workflows. Now I've got some controls this here. This recording is for yeah, yeah, the workflow hard. for designing a pond That's it, in yeah. SS3. SS3? Start by Look at these ponds. Chris can do this, too. He's good at this. Here's the last slide. Locate the train. So there's your point. Change the control elevation to 32. See that a little burn. Uh, super elevation, all the rest of this, all the chapters we went through, there's a webinar out there on how to do those, um, specifically probably even on this curb. If you want to figure out how to do the curb, there's a session out there. Some of these are getting kind of outdated, 2014. Hmm.